Second Chronicles chapter 4. Moreover, he made an altar of brass. This would be the brazen altar. This is where the children of Israel will bring their animals. 20 cubits the length thereof. Those are 20. 20 cubits the breadth thereof. And 10 cubits the height thereof. Now Moses raised an altar. If you look along with verse 1. Moses was two and a half by one and a half by one and a half. What a difference. Again, Solomon is 20 by 20 by 10. It's a huge altar compared to what Moses had. I guarantee they wouldn't want to carry uh, Solomon's altar around. He made a molten sea like Moses made. Ten cubits from brim to brim. And I forget that's diameter or radius. Round and compass. Compass and circle. And five cubits the height thereof. And a line of 30 cubits to compass it round about. I believe that would be circumference. And under it was a similitude of oxen. This was not like Moses brazen altar. I mean, not brazen altar. Uh, brazen sea. So here is where the priest of Wah, if you walk up to it, and we're going to see these oxen, which they compass it round about, this circle, ten in cubic, compassing the sea round about, two rows of oxen were cast when it was cast, made out of a mold. Now, see, you see, well, what's the difference between Aaron making a golden calf and Solomon's making a brazen oxen you know Aaron said well look I threw it in the fire and out came this calf yeah right you you fashioned it Solomon makes these oxen what, what's the difference they worshiped and gave service to the golden calf Solomon is making decorated items of non-worship it would be for beauty. Wow, look at that thing. It's got the oxen. And it wasn't to be praised. It didn't get no uh, burnt offerings. It didn't get sacrificed. No one bowed down before it. And it's funny because oxen are a type of preachers. The hard workers are the ones that break open the ground. And they're carrying the water. It stood upon 12 oxen. Three looking toward the north, three looking toward the west, three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. And the sea was set above upon them, carrying the burden. And all the hinder parts were inward. So you would see the oxen's faces and their butts would be inside holding up this, this, this big bowl of water. And like I said, uh, oxen are type of priest. They're supposed to hold up. They're supposed to handle and carry. And the thickness of it was a hand breath. That's a, that's a big thickness. That labor. And the brim of it looked like the work of a brim of a cup with flowers of lily. Oh, that's where lilies come from on, on Easter. And they surround a big water. So what would be the main thing of today's churches, of church history, lilies and a baptismal? But this is not a baptismal. No one was baptized here, and only the priest could wash. No one else could have been washed at this thing. It was for the cleansing of the priests, not for baptism. And it received and held 3,000 baths. I don't know what a bath, they say about eight gallons. I don't know, if they know better. That's a lot of gallons if that's the case. He made also 10 labors. All right, so you got the, the brazen sea. Now you got ten labors. This was not in Moses' tabernacle. And put five on the right hand and five on the left to wash in them such things that as things 
offered for the burnt offering, they washed them in, wash in them, excuse me. But the sea was for the priest to wash in. All right, so the brazen sea was only for the priest to wash their hands and their feet. He made labors to wash the animal parts. And when we looked at the law and say, you know, you're to cut this animal in pieces, you're to wash the inward. That would be now at the labor. Taken for granted or assuming that the brazen, uh, keep saying brazen, the brazen sea that Moses made a looking glass of the women was the place where the priests washed and they washed the animal sacrifices. Now we have a separate. He made 10 candlesticks of gold. In Moses, there was one. According to the to their form and set them in the temple five on the right hand and five on the left that was not in Moses temple there was one there was one table one golden altar he's got ten there are ten tables because look he he made also ten tables and placed them in the temple five on the right side and five on the left he made a hundred basins of gold to go on those tables so we got a Gentile number showing up in the temple. 10 is a Gentile number. 12 is Jewish. That's kind of weird. You got 10 labors. You got 12 oxen. That's Jewish. You got this huge brazen altar. And still, there's times that would say that that altar could not handle all the sacrifices sometimes those kings brought in times of revival. A lot of it could be done. He made also ten tables and placed them in, a, in the temple, five on the right side and five on the left. And he made a hundred bases of gold. So going east to west, <clears throat> on the right side would be facing north. On the left would be facing south. He went through the temple east to west. Furthermore, he made the court of the priests and the great court. There's two courts here. There was no two courts in Moses. There was a courtyard. And it's described as a great court and a court just for the priests. No one else was to be there. And the doors for the court and overlaid the doors of them with brass. Everything else has been gold. Brass pictures judgment. And he set the sea on the right side of the east end. Right is east. Wait a minute. He set the sea on the right side of the east end. So on the right, it would be northeast. Over against the south. I could be wrong now. Over against the south. I thought they went to the temple east to west. Hiram, here's our friend again of Tyre, made the pots and the shovels and the basins. And Hiram finished the work that was that he was to make for King Solomon for the house of God. So here is this Gentile working with the Jewish people with a Gentile number. Acts chapter 10 is Cornelius. Genesis chapter 10 is the League of Nations. To wit, two pillars and the pommels. And the pommel is that little ball that sits on top of the pillar. That little decorated ball. And the chapters, which were on the top of the two pillars, and the, two, and the two reeds to cover the two pommels of the chapters, which were on the top of the pillars. So there's wreaths. It's not a Christmas wreath. It's a decoration. And wreaths, if you were to study wreaths, would go into pagan god and goddess worship of the sexual nature again. That sure ain't for here. Psalm is designed in this temple not only for God, but he's designed it for brightness. And he's designed it for beauty. 
So some people say, okay, it's, it's good to have a wreath in the church. This is not the church building, remember? You're messing with scripture. And 400 pomegranates. I haven't seen 400 pomegranates in any church building. On the two wreaths, two rows of pomegranates on each wreath to cover the two pommels of the chapters which were upon the pillars. Now you see the pommels of 12 and 13, that's the only three places those pommels show up. They don't show anywhere else. And again, that's that little ball that sits on I, I thought that was quite interesting. Now, what are these wreaths? Are they flowers and, and, and fir trees and all that? Well, let's look at it again. Let's look at the scripture. Verse 13, and 400 pomegranates on the two wreaths, two rows of pomegranates on each wreath, to cover the two pommels of the chapters which were upon the pillars. Now, chapter 3, verse 15. And he made before the house two pillars, 35 in height, the chapters that were on top of each of them was five cubits. He made chains as in the oracle and put them on the heads of the pillars and made a hundred pomegranates and put them upon the chains. Oh. I mean, here are 400 and we just read a uh, hundred. Look like kind of chains kind of thing. May not be the reef that we're thinking about. Verse 14. He made also bases and lavers made he upon the bases. So we're just getting all the details of what's going on and what and anybody who knows design knows what this is talking about. I don't. I don't picture carpentry and building materials and all that. Verse 15, 1C. We just read about it. verse uh, 2 to 5. That's that C. That's the brazen sea that Moses made of looking, the looking wind, uh, mirrors of the, of the women. And 12 oxen under it. We just read that. So we're summing up. The pots also, the shovels, and the flesh hook. And all the instruments did Haram, his father, make to King Solomon for the house of the Lord a bright brass. This place just lights up. Bright, pure gold, bright brass. Brass again pictures judgment. In the plain of Jordan did the king cast them in the clay ground between Succoth and Zadreth. So in this area, in the clay of the ground, they're making these forms. They would pour the brass in those forms, wait for the brass to, to dry, harden. Then they would dig it up, break off the cast, and there's what they have. Right? It was probably a wonderful thing to see. This area probably just lit up with red hot brass cooling down. Thus Solomon made all these vessels in great abundance, for the weight of the brass could not be found out. There's a lot of brass. A lot of judgment. And when we get to the time of the judgment seat of Christ, and when we get to the great white throne judgment, do you know how much judgment there's going to be? Endless and countless. You take all the sins that men have done, and they're going to stand before judgment if they're not under the blood at the, at the judgment seat of Christ. If they're under the blood, they're, they're, no, they're not to be judged. If they're not, if they are under the blood, we're not going to be judged for those. Those that are not under the blood, they will be put to wood, hay, and stubble. Our works will be put to gold, precious stone, and uh, silver. All that's going to be judged. And when a lost man stands before God at the great white, I mean, yeah, the great white throne judgment, do you imagine how much judgment is going to be? How many people there have been from Adam? And I'm not saying, well, yeah, Adam probably did the great white throne. You know, his name being the Lamb's Book of Life. All the way back from Adam. To the last human being ever to be going to stand. You imagine all the judgment. Now, don't forget, the Bible says that Paul writes to us and tells us, Do you not know that we will judge angels? How many angels are going to be judged? 
I have no idea. And eternity begins in Revelation 19. And thank God that time stops in Revelation 19. Can you imagine us sitting there looking at our watches when all the world is going to be judged at the Great White Throne Judgment? And there will be people at the Great White Throne Judgment. They're saved. They're not saved where we're saved. If their names in the land books of life, then they get to go to the new heavens, new earth, or however God sets that up. But you take one man in his lifetime who is not in the church age, who does not have the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. All the things he has done, one man, they're going to be put forth the great white throne judgment. Phew. That's a lot. Every idle word a man shall give it. That's a lot. Whoso look upon a woman lust after his heart. That's a lot. The eyes of the Lord see the, the evil and the good. That's a lot. And brass, judgment. That's a lot. And Solomon made all these vessels that were for the house of God. The golden altar also, that's the prayer in, incense altar. That's where John the Baptist's father goes in. That's where the incense was. That's where uh, Nadab and Baihu burn up with their strange fire. And the tables, plural, where the showbread was set. We just read about that in verse 8, plural, because there's 10 of them. Moreover, the candlesticks, plural, 10, with their lamps. And if it's seven lamps like it's supposed to be, you got 70 lights. That they should be burned after the manner before the oracle, before the whole, most holy place. Of pure gold and the flowers and the lamps and the tongues all for the candlestick made he of gold and that perfect gold perfect you get a chunk of gold that's not good enough and the Bible says that you know silver and gold was just like stones in Jerusalem you just imagine they're there building a temple that's not good throw it out you know flops on the ground they get it okay is this one nope Oh, this one's good enough. We'll use that. And the flowers and the lamps and the tongs used for the, you know, for the wicks and all that, made he of gold and that, not just gold, that perfect gold. The snuffers, again, a candlestick tool, and the basins and the spoons and the censers of pure gold. And the entry of the house, the inner doors thereof for the most holy place, and the doors of the house of the temple were of gold. Golden doors. So, we see a more extravagant thing than what Moses had in the wilderness. We see gold, we see brass, we see brilliance of light, we see Jesus Christ. He is the light of the world. Imagine what this building shined when that sun came up in the morning. Pictures the second advent. Pictures this place in, in a noonday heat. And yet when Paul's going down at noonday on the road to Damascus, he said there was a light that was a, above the noonday light. This place was above the noonday light. This place was to shine and say, hey, I want to find God. You see that? Is that light over there? Yeah. Just follow it. Bring your glasses. Because it's only going to get brighter and brighter and brighter. And when you follow the book of book uh, Pilgrim's Progress, you see that light over there. Yeah, it kind of. And this light is from a sun that has been cursed. And when we get to New Jerusalem, where we will have 12 stones of gems of a foundation, one pearl for 12 gates. And the Bible says we will not need the light of the sun or the moon or the star. The Lamb and God will be the light of that. Can you imagine how much that place is going to sparkle? And don't you see why we're going to need a new body? Our eyeballs could not. Could not. Fancy. And some people say for the fact is that Paul's condition was an eye trouble. Because he went to heaven. He came back. 
Some people say his eyes were burnt out. And that's possible. Satan is called Lucifer. Luke's light. God likes light. God likes color. These stones picture the, the breastplate of the priest. It pictures Satan himself, he's Ezekiel 28, and the light of New Jerusalem in Revelation 20, 21, and 22. We are going to a place of great light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And you know what? When you flash that, that light into them, they run away like cockroaches. John chapter 3 says, you know, they, they don't want it. And I got several messages about cockroaches. They're not going to be happy in heaven because they're not happy with what the light has been shown to them. There's greater and better coming through God, Jesus Christ. 